This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Okay, despite the happy music, it's not going to be very happy times in Fruit of Grisea today. Okay, oh, great! The title of this is called Overdose. I don't like where this is going. I hope Mitru's not overdosing on drugs as a result of her cat dying, but someone tells me that's where it's going to go. It gave Michiru a little time to herself. She may have managed to calm down a bit by now. I head to the girl's room to check up on her. It's me. I'm coming in. There's no answer. I open the door immediately, but pause for a moment before entering it, as if expecting the cat to suddenly poke his head into the gap. This despite the fact that I disposed of his body only a few minutes ago. Ridiculous. Again with the darkness? Let's start by making things a little less... Halfway through one sentence, my breath catches in my throat. Mitra is crumpled awkwardly on the floor, almost as if she's fallen out of the bed. There's a fine white froth around her mouth. Yep, she's overdosing. Numerous containers of ramen candy lie scattered on the ground around her. I've been slightly suspicious about these for some time now, but now it's obvious that they're in fact some kind of medication. An overdose, is it? Lovely. I grab one of the lozenges from the floor and pop it into my mouth. Why are you doing that? The medicine quickly dissolves when I chew, leaving a powdery substance. I immediately spit it out and wipe my tongue off a sleeve. Not a particularly strong drug, but that doesn't make an overdose any less dangerous. I'm sorry, did you just, like, eat medication that you weren't aware of what it was, and then you're like, Mmm, yes, this tastes like this drug. I know it's not that serious. Like, come on, I know willing suspension of disbelief and all that, but that's just crazy. Michiru, open your mouth. <laughs> okay, Bert, open your mouth. I push Michiru up in a sitting position and wrench open her mouth with my fingers, pulling out a thick, gooey lump of half-melted half lozenges. Eesh. Pipe down. Getting your stomach pumped hurts like hell, you know. Let's try and deal with this here. The area around her mouth coated with the sticky saliva, Michiru breaks down in tears. You did a stupid damn thing just now. Expect a proper scolding later. There's no need to try and bear everything all by yourself, understood? I'm here. Oh my gosh! They actually had a, they actually had voice clips in there of the of the principal talking to us. My gosh, the attention to detail in this game is phenomenal. If if only it were less uncomfortable to play. Sorry, Chizuru. Hi, Proxima. Nice to see you. We just uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's serious time in Fruit of Grisea right now. I'm aware. I'll repay you for this soon. It's alright, Michiru. You can sleep a little longer. Oh. Oh, are we going to get Michiru's Alm flashback now? Because this is the same style that we had when we got Sachi's Alm flashback last time. Oh. This is about to get deep, I think. Oh, nope. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> We're going back to the dormitory lobby. Maybe she just wanted to avert her eyes from reality for a brief moment. Maybe she wanted to make a permanent escape from this claustrophobic box. Nobody knows Michiru's reasons. I can speculate endlessly, but it won't get me any closer to a definitive answer. It might even be that the girl herself has no real explanation. Self-destructive behavior isn't going to change the world around you. Your pain won't make time run backward. Reality isn't going anywhere. Shizuru told our classmates that Michiru had collapsed from anemia. 
Letting them know that about a suicide attempt would, without a doubt, have created a counterproductive uproar. Yeah, I get that. At this rate, the girl is going to end up shifting from a pseudo sundari to a sickly character. Morning. How are you feeling? After a few days of rest, Michiru's returned to her normal routine. At a glance, it's hard to believe she might have deliberately attempted to end her own life. The others were fairly worried, but when Michiru brought out the normal Sundari Salmon dance, they apparently decided that she was completely back to normal. But I think otherwise. The girl's absolutely not the same. If anything, she seems like an entirely different person. Why do I stream at 10 instead of 9? Um, I'm streaming at 1pm EST on weekends. Usually Saturday, very occasionally I move it to Sunday, but I haven't changed the time that I start. Unless there's like a daylight savings difference somewhere, but there shouldn't be. Nice to see you though, Nick. Welcome, welcome. To be perfectly frank, she looks like a lifeless doll acting out a fictional character. Right. Sorry. But today, Michiru strikes up a conversation from her end. After the incident, we've only had... We've had only the briefest of interactions, so this comes as something of a surprise. Oh? What kind of compromise? Oh, I don't like where this is going. That's a terrible idea! That doesn't strike me as much of a solution. It's like closing your eyes and covering your ears when the debt collector knocks on your door. Who's going to pay the bill in your place? What's that supposed to mean? Yeesh. I don't remember changing your diapers, and if I thought you were a nuisance, I'd say so. You know he would! He said much worse. <laughs> what are you even talking about, woman? Hi, Sachi. When Sachi appears, Michiru abruptly changes her expression and hurls out an energetic greeting. That's not necessarily a good word. Um, was that really flattery? <laughs> you know, I can settle for that. <laughs> I can settle for not insults. ほめられてるってこと。ミチル様、大丈夫ですか?ってことね。え、何が?大丈夫よ。Things um, are you speaking from personal experience, Sachi? <laughs> That was a very specific metaphor. Uh-oh. No thanks. Was she squeaking as she walked off? I heard something from her. Michiru, my friend, try not to push yourself. <laughs> um... Did the game just crash? 
別に無理なんてしてないけど<笑>でもそうねちょっと休んでくる。Um, that was weird. Was that intentional on the game's part to, like, put in that 10 second bot pause? Or was that just the game glitching out there? Oh well. I think that would be wise. Mitra shuts herself up in her room for several hours, only emerging that evening. Her face is slightly less pallid, but she's still carrying herself a little oddly. Hey, managed to calm down a little? Oh. Mm hmm. Betsy. Oh no, run. You're wearing your uniform as well, Makina. Mitra starts in surprise at Makina's words. Seems to have only just realized that her choice of clothes is somewhat unusual for this time of year. I'd made a tactful decision to not comment on the matter, but Makina's a free spirit, unbound by such concerns. Mitru may have been making a decent effort to hide it, but she's in a disturbed, unstable frame of mind. The girl pretty clearly isn't capable of paying attention to her clothing right now. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. That's still weird. You can't fool me, game. You keep trying to make Amine the voice of reason being like, Look, she's reasonable. She ain't. Sure. あんたたちが心配しないように、ミチル様健在ってところをアピッとかないとね。うんふん。なるほどな。でもそんなアピリはどうでもいいのよ。ボンとトゥー。ねえねえ、お兄ちゃん。外で風吹きして遊ぼう
ミチルってばまだ完全に体調が戻ってないみたいねねえユージ様子見に行った方がいいんじゃない Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. I'll go. Mitru, you alright? Answer me. Hmm? You don't look so hot after all. Mitru, let's. Mitru grabs my wrist and unceremoniously drags me into the unoccupied room. Who's talking through the radio? This is weird. Also, am I gonna have to close off this? Don't like the panty shot. But I don't have to change I don't have to change away for this. What's wrong? The others are worried, you know. Michiru mumbles a spectacularly inadequate explanation in a tear choked voice. I honestly don't know what she's trying to say. Want to do what? If you have something to say, then say it. Say what? What is this girl thinking? I stop by out of concern for her physical well being, and she drags me in here for this, of all things. I don't understand you. First, you go on about how you don't want anything from me anymore, and now you're demanding kisses? Mm. Don't like this. Is playing pretend really going to satisfy you? Bad idea. All the way? What's that supposed to mean? Mishru looks at me with an earnest expression and pleads her case. You know how a couple of like episodes ago we talked about getting her to a hospital so she can get help? Can we do that now instead of this? I decline. Oh, man, Yuji! Really? You're just in a temporary state of mental agitation. Sorry, but I don't make a habit of playing with distraught women. You know what? Give a hand for Yuji for not taking advantage of her, even when she's literally asking for it. I... You know what, my respect for Yuji just went up. Now just try to convince her to go to the hospital. You sure as hell don't look it. I can't help but let out a little tactless laughter. I guess the girl's trying to demonstrate she's the same as always by means of this incredibly strange tsundere act. But seriously... Honestly, you really are an idiot. Not what I would be saying in this situation, but also, every character in this game except the principal has several screws. Actually, even the principal kind of had several screws loose. Alright, since you insist that strongly, I'll play along. No! This is... I, he's literally like, no, I won't take advantage of you. And then he's like, oh, okay, I guess I will. Like, Re Are you serious? Is this really going to accomplish anything? Can we get an actual choice here to be like, <laughs> do it, don't do it. I'll pick don't do it. A lot of stuff, is it? Hmm. Well, whatever, that works. I do have a lot of things I want to ask you. I pull Michiru close to me and bring my face to hers. I don't like where this CG is going. When our lips touch lightly, a soft moan escapes from the corner of her mouth. I don't like this at all. I'm getting ready to blacken out, if necessary. 
Just as requested, I repeat, gentle, affectionate kisses on the sort of, of the sort of loving couple, my chair. This is you, you just say kisses, right? That's that's all that I'll allow. Something wrong? Your breathing seems to have gotten rough all of a sudden. Uh huh. Still trying to pull the Sundari Act, huh? In that case. As I press my lips against Michiru's more strongly than before, I feel her body go stiff as a board. You said to go all the way, didn't you? I really will stop, if that's what you want. But she quickly catches the sleeve of my shirt to halt my retreat. Didn't you just tell me to cut it out? This is deeply uncomfortable! I see. In that case, next time I won't stop even if you ask me to. Uh, gosh, I hate this. Girl's tough tone fades in and out at random, feeling nervous, it would seem. Maybe a slightly different approach is called for. Don't make me do all the work, Mitru. Try starting to kiss yourself for once. Compared to me kissing you unilaterally, a give-and-take exchange would be more couple-like, don't you think? Right, right. I bring my face towards Michiru's and stop just as my lips are about to make contact with hers. Her cheeks flush a vivid shade of red. Seems like she's taken the hint. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. No bots allowed in my chat. After a hesitant moment where her eyes flip back and forth, Mitru softly touches her lips to mine, lightly sucks against my mouth, then retreats. Before she has a chance to turn her face aside in embarrassment, I follow and kiss her in return. You gotta love how much story this adds to the overall plot. This is definitely necessary to have in the game. We press our lips together again and again, alternating attack and defense. Michiru. Whenever our mouths part for a moment, Michiru looks up at me with moist eyes. Do I have to do it? <laughs> I had to do it in the Sachi route. I'm not afraid to do it again. I reach out to stroke her cheek, then gently wrap my arm around her shoulder and pull her closer. Before I know it, Mitru's fallen asleep in my arms. Oh, good. But we can't exactly lie around here all day. I lift the girl onto my back and head for her room. Okay, good. Okay, I think, th I think the worst of it's over, everybody. Yay. I wait at Mitru's bedside as she sleeps, co occupying myself with a book. I feel a little exasperated at myself for reading at a time like this, but it's the surest method I have of regaining emotional balance. It's not like I'm an indifferent robot. Sleeping with Michiru has complicated my feelings more than a little. You, by that, you mean you you literally only, like, slept in the same location that she was, and not the euphemistic... Because we very clearly just kissed, but it was awkward. Or maybe they skipped the sex scene, in which case, well, I'm glad they did it. By that, I mean, I'm glad they skipped it. When I look up from the book for the first time in a while, the girl's awake and watching me quietly. I ask if she's feeling all right, prompting a quiet, it hurts. What? Did I knock you against something on my way up here? Sorry about that. As she speaks, Michiru offers me a sincere smile for the first time in a while. Alright then, we're done playing make-believe for the moment. So why don't you tell me what you've been hiding? I'll hear you out. Flashback, flashback, flashback. I lower my paperback to the floor, shifting my attention to Michiru's story. 